Okay, hi everybody, welcome back to the Redbridge Science Channel. Today we're going to be watching a reaction between two elements, iron and sulphur. Okay, the learning objective. Can I describe what might happen to atoms during a chemical change? So, a reminder of the three key words that we've been covering this recently. So, an element. An element is something that is made of only the one type of atom. Okay, so elements are made of just one type of atom. And today we're going to be using sulphur. And sulphur is an element, it's in the periodic table. And sulphur is simply made of sulphur atoms. We're also using iron. Iron, again, an element in the periodic table. It's purely made of iron atoms. We're going to be making them into a mixture. A mixture is when you have two or more different types, okay, and here we are, I've got two or more different types, and we're going to mix them with each other, but we're not going to actually join them together at that stage, okay? So you have atoms, different atoms amongst each other, but they're not joined. But I am going to be turning them into a compound, and a compound is when you've got two or more different types of atoms, and they have been chemically joined together. Okay, so those three words today are going to be very, very important. Okay, so to the experiment, I'm going to be definitely wearing my goggles for this one. So, sulphur, as I say, sulphur is an element, and it's rather a beautiful one, actually. A lovely sort of yellow, pale yellow colour, uh, only made of sulphur atoms. And iron, and iron is a metal and it's kind of shiny grey in colour, but again, it's only made of iron atoms. Now, when you mix them together, like we've already done here, you can see the iron and the sulphur together in the tube, and the atoms are now starting to get amongst each other, uh, a mix between each other, and I will give them a bit of a shake, and we'll try to mix them up a little bit more, but they're definitely beginning to mix. But the thing about a mixture is that those atoms have not joined together yet. And I can show that to you using a magnet, because if I think about one of the properties of iron, it's magnetic, it's one of the magnetic metals. And sulphur is certainly not magnetic. So I should be able to separate these two fairly easily, okay? And you can see that I can pull the iron out, but the sulphur stays, okay? So, using a magnet and thinking about one of the properties of iron, I can separate these two from each other fairly easily. Okay, so there's our mixture. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to chemically change this. I'd like to turn it into a compound, okay? And the way to do that is going to be to heat it. So we're looking for any signs of a chemical reaction, a chemical change going on. Okay. Now the first thing I'm seeing, I'm hoping you can pick this up on the camera, is that there's a colour change. I'm seeing here something that looks really quite reddish. I'm also getting a rather unpleasant smell, even though I've tried to bung up the top a little bit with cotton wool. But hopefully you can see that red colour. It looks like it's becoming a liquid as well. Yeah, there's a red liquid going on. Some of the sulphur powder is sort of jumping up and sticking itself to the top. But hopefully you can see there's a very obvious chemical reaction going on here. Red colour liquid and certainly an unpleasant smell. So we're reacting iron and sulphur together. Hopefully you've been watching the film clips we've made about uh, naming of compounds and so the compound that we're making here uh, it's a two element compound so uh, the ending should be in "-ide", and we always put the name of the metal first. So, iron and sulphur is going to make iron sulphide. 
which is the name of this compound. Okay, I'm going to stop at that point. Now, the thing about compounds is that those two atoms have chemically joined together. And because they've joined, it should now be very, very difficult, perhaps even impossible, for me to separate the iron from the sulphur. Okay, they have chemically joined together. And it's not going to be easy to show you at the moment, but if I use the magnet again here, I shouldn't really be able to separate... It helps when it doesn't stick to the tongs. I shouldn't be able to separate the iron and the sulphur anymore because they've joined together. Okay, some of the sulphur has come and stuck itself to the top here, okay, but I can't separate the two. Essentially, it's become one solid lump of iron sulphide. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to the screen now and show you this uh, as a model. Okay, so at the beginning we had uh, the element and its atoms of iron, so I would represent that with something like this, okay, grey circles to represent atoms of iron, and we had the other element which was sulphur, so I'm using some yellow circles there to represent the atoms of sulphur, and then we mix them together. So when you mix them together, you've got your two types of atom, your iron atoms and your sulfur atoms, and they're mixed amongst each other, but they're not actually joined together. And at the end, after you've heated them, they join together to make iron sulfide. And I'm representing that, showing you that the atoms have joined to each other, and hopefully you can see as well there's a colour change there as well, to show that there was a chemical reaction. Okay? So, what might happen to the atoms during the chemical reaction? Well, they start off separate because they're two elements. You mix them amongst each other but they don't join. And then after you heat them, they join to make a compound iron sulphide and the atoms have joined together, which now means that they are almost impossible, if not impossible, to separate from each other. Okay, thank you everyone.